Be better. Here we go. As soon as you're open, your man helps it off. That's the catch you two got to be ready. Work, work, work. Good evening and welcome inside the GCU Arena on the campus of Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. On this Valentine's Day, Jack O'Hara with you alongside Philip Katofimo for GCU women's basketball action as the Lopes host the UMKC Kangaroos here tonight on this Thursday evening. Now, Phil, both teams coming into this one kind of cold. Lopes, three-game losing streak. UMKC, three-game losing streak to Lopes. Uh, unfortunate in their uh, game against New Mexico State, a 29-point loss in New Mexico. What's going to take the Lopes to rebound tonight? Well, both, like you said, both these teams looking to break their uh, their losing streaks. They're looking for a Valentine's Day gift from themselves to get a W tonight, and it's it's going to take uh, it's going to take a lot. It's going to take some great play off the bench for the Lopes, and it's going to take slowing down Eric Mattingly, the junior from UMKC. Yeah, UMKC down the Lopes in Kansas City last time, 73 to 45. It was Erica Mattingly put up 23 points that night. It'll be interesting to see what the Lopes can do here tonight to bounce back as we are just weeks away from the WAC tournament. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Lopes kind of playing for seeding right now. They're at the bottom half of the WAC right now, just really trying to improve their odds of who they're going to take on in the first uh, first round of the tournament. Well, let's take a look. Let's see how the Lopes are going to fare tonight with our Sanderson Ford three keys to the game. We said it at the top. We'll say it again. Slow down Erica Mattingly. This junior averaging 19.3 points a game. She got a double-double last time they played in UMKC. Then they got to start strong and finish strong. The Lopes had to come from behind in the second half in two of their last three games. So they got to start out ahead of this team and finish ahead of this team. And lastly, get back on track. Pete, this three-game losing streak. Well, it's the Lopes, it's the Ruse. It's here at GCU Arena. Let's toss it over to the court for both prayer and anthem. Thundering herd pet band. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for today. God, I thank you for the beautiful rain outside. I thank you that today is a day where we get to honor and celebrate the friendships and relationships that you have blessed us with, God. As we continue to carry on with the rest of our evening, Lord, I ask that you will grant safety and protection over these players, that they may play, play the best to their ability, and also for your honor and glory. And Father, I ask that as spectators and as musicians and performers on, on the other side of the court, God, that you will guide our thoughts, our words, and our actions, that they may be reflective of you and as a Christian university. God, we thank you and praise you for everything that you do and you're going to continue to do throughout the rest of this night. It is in your son's name that I pray. Amen. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the playing of our national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by your very own Thundering Herd Pet Band under the direction of the Professor Paul Cook and tonight his associate, Mr. Kenneth Sandoval. Fans, it is time to meet the starters for this evening's matchup. We begin with the visiting ruse. At forward, a six-foot senior, number two, Kristen Moore. At guard, a 5'7 junior, number 14, Erica Mattingly. At guard, a 5'11 sophomore, number 15, Taylor Larson. At guard, a 5'10 freshman, number 22, Brooke Hampel. And at forward, a 5'10 freshman, number 34, Leah Vihill. The Ruse are led by head coach J.C. Hoyt in her second season, associate head coach Robin Bostick, assisted by Patrick Harrison and Kindred Wiesman.
And now the starting lineup for your Grand Canyon University Antelope. At guard, a 5'5 senior from Bali, India. Number four, Kavita Akula. At guard, a 5'9 freshman from Barcelona, Spain. Number five, Laura Piera. At guard, a 5'9 freshman from Bakersfield, California. Number 11, Taylor Caldwell. At forward, a six foot senior from Antioch, California. Number 23, AJ Seifers. And at forward, a six four junior from Hilly, Texas. Number 34, Jay. Shaw Daniel! The Lopes are coached by Nicole Powell in her second season. Assisted by Nikki Blue, Brad Langston, and Taylor High. And that was the starting lineup brought to you by Dignity Health. Now, it was a question mark going into this one whether Laura Piero was going to be ready hurt her hand in that game against New Mexico State last weekend, but it looks like she is good to go here tonight, Phil, as we wait for tip-off between the Lopes and the Roos. Well, we're gonna need, it's gonna be basically all hands on deck tonight. Uh, Deja Daniel, who has been an absolute spark plug for this team off the bench, is getting the start tonight. Her last three games, 14 points against Bakersfield, 15 and 12 rebounds against UTRGV, and then, of course, against New Mexico State, nine points and eight rebounds. So Deja's been playing Fantastic off the bench for the Lopes, but now she's got the start next to AJ Cephas. And Kansas City comes into this one 11 11 overall, so they're 500, 5 and 4 coming into WAC play. Lopes sitting at 5 and 15 overall with a 3 and 7 record coming into conference play. Looking to gain some steam here as we head closer to the WAC tournament. Tip off is here, let's do it here in Phoenix. Looks like we got some issues with the shot clock. Was that 14? We need to be at 30. So now we can get underway. Well, that's never a good start. <laughs> well, we'll see if they can figure things out here as it looks like Laura Pierre is gonna start out with the ball, take it up the court. Lopes looking to start off hot, like we said, Lopes have had issues getting ahead in games recently. Again, looking for their first win in February. And what a win to get it on Valentine's Day, sort of like a uh, early Valentine's Day gift to themselves, basically. Very nice. Some might say. Some might say, we didn't say it, but some might say. <laughs> As Pierre starts things off. Kavita Kula at the top of the key. Pierre has got it in the corner. Passes it off to Cephas. And the pass is gonna be intercepted by the Ruse as they take it the other way. Top of the key and they're gonna call traveling on Kansas City. And as the Lopes will be back in possession here, it's look, looking like Pierre is gonna take it back to the top of the key. So starting out at point guard tonight. As she hands it off to Cephas, full court press by the Ruse as they look for the early advantage defensively against the Lopes. And it looks like it's gonna be Deja Daniel with the layup. Brilliant pass there from Pierre as the Lopes are ahead 2-0 early on. Well, it starts with that pass. Laura Pierre, you can see right there, heads looking at the basket, ball goes down low to a wide open Deja Daniel. That's what Laura Pierre does. So the Ruse look to bounce right back. Top of the key from downtown, it's no good. That shot from number 22, Brooke Hample. As the Havocs are up and rolling early on in this one. So again, the full court press from the Ruse. It's gonna be Akula. The pass to Daniel again. So Deja Daniel with the hot start as the Lopes take a commanding 4-0 lead early on. Just again, real easy bounce pass from Kavita Akula. Deja Daniel's gonna be a problem for the Ruse all night. And the Lopes on defense 
causing the Ruse problems already as the ball in the paint. It's gonna be Hampel. Thought about the three again there. Thought better of it. Passes it off to Lila Vigal as that ball is in and the, the Lopes lead is cut in half, it's 4-2. Love to see a pass inside or a pass out from AJ Cephas, but not a terrible look inside. She got a pretty decent mid range game, but maybe slow it down a little bit on that transition. AJ Cephas trying to do a little bit too much on that play as the Ruse have an opportunity to tie things up right here. Top of the key. It's Erica Mattingly with the ball, pass inside, going to be tipped, and the ball looking like it's going to stay with the Ruse as it tips off Christina Soriano's hand there. Pass comes to Brooke Hample at the top of the key. And there is Erica Mattingly again. Shuffles in the paint, puts up the layup, no good. Lopes defense. Keeping them at bay, Laura Piera takes it up the key. Aggressively enters the paint as she... And it looks like Deja Daniels gonna pick up the foul there, going in for the aggressive layup there. She'll shoot two. And that's sort of the benefit with De having Deja Daniel on the floor is that added length. She's got such long arms. She can take those entry passes down low and go quickly up and, and get easy layups to draw fouls. So Daniel good on her two free throw attempts has all six points for the Lopes thus far. Again, full court press on both sides early on in this one. Mattingly has it at the top of the key. Laura Pierre guarding. And a foul is called on the Ruse. So second foul on the Ruse as the Lopes look to take a commanding lead early on. Lopes have not been able to do that as of late as they look to separate themselves from Kansas City here in the first. Taylor Caldwell takes it up. Shuffles it off to Piera. Piera at the top of the key. Takes it inside the paint, takes her shot, and she will not get the friendly, friendly roll on that one as the Ruse will take it the other way. Brooke Hample looking for a pick as she shuffles it off to Kristen Moore, the forward. Pass inside, Christina Soriano. And another foul, three seconds in the paint there as the Lopes will take it the other way. Well, I would. This is exactly the start the Lopes needed against UMKC, a team that does score a lot of points. And this is what I talked about in, the, in our Sanderson Forge. Start strong, now they just got to end strong. They're playing very well so far. Hopefully they can keep it up through this entire first quarter. So everything going good in the Philip Catofimo playbook thus far. And I hope in the Nicole Powell playbook as well, more importantly. One would hope, as a shot is good there from Taylor Caldwell, right from the free throw point line as it's an 8-2 point, or 8-2 Lopes lead. Yeah, Caldwell doing a great job, driving inside, spotting up mid-range, knocking down a nice two. Havoc's up and going early on. It's Brooke Hample in the corner. Ruse needing a big shot here as they're down by six with five and a half left to go in the first quarter. And it looks like Carla Balagay will be subbed in here, her first appearance of the evening.
And the foul's gonna be on Cephas there. So the Roos get another shot here. Pass outside. That's Kristen Moore. Shuffles it off to Erica Mattingly. Mattingly yet to make an effect in this one. As Campbell's gonna take another shot, she nails that one from downtown, and just like that, the Roos are right back in this thing. Yeah, open three by Hample. Hand down, man down. She's gonna knock him down every time. Layup no good there from Miller. As a golden opportunity here for the Roos to get right back in this one. That three from Hample made it a one score game. As that is number 15, Taylor Larson, the guard out of Huxley, Iowa, making this a one point game in Phoenix. Caldwell takes it up, passes to Piera. Miller from the top of the key takes her shot and it is good. Nothing but net. As the Lopes now lead it by three. Yeah, spot up two from Sharon Miller. She's got a sneaky mid-range game. Usually see her down low, but Sharon's not afraid to spot up. Who's looking to answer? They're gonna get the foul. Or excuse me, the ball went out of bounds, so the Lopes will recover here as a timeout is taken. Timeout on the floor, we'll take a timeout here. It is the Lopes 10 and the Roos 7 early on here in the first quarter. We'll be right back here on GCU TV. Time you washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com. Back here on GCU TV, we got about four minutes and 11 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Lopes lead it by a score of 10 to seven in large part thanks to Deja Daniel, Phil. Yeah, six points for the junior. Deja doing what she does well, scoring on the inside, getting beautiful passes down low, giving herself opportunities. She was doing most of the scoring for the Lopes early on, but now, uh, well, we're finding some more points from everybody else. So Laura Piera takes it up again, does not seem to be bothered by that hand as that shot from downtown. That is Varus, 4-3, it is 13-7. So yeah. just like that, the Lopes back in a commanding six point lead. Yeah, Ven Lavaris has got such a nice stroke from the outside, 36% from three point land this season for the, fr uh, for the freshman. As that ball gets away from the ruse, we'll see and it looks like it's gonna be a backcourt violation. Lopes will recover. So things not clicking early on for the Ruse. Despite that early three from Brooke Hample, Lopes defense seems to have stalled the Ruse as Piera goes in for the lab. Piera will get the foul and she'll shoot two. No, that's what Laura Piera does well. She's able to attack the basket with such efficiency, and you can see her kind of clinching that right hand. You see the, the strap on her hand, injuring her thumb in the, uh, the game against Mexico State. But like you said, Jack, it doesn't seem to be bothering her. And the first shot is good. Like you just said, Phil, that thumb does not seem to be bothering Laura Piera. Question mark heading into this one. Seems good to go. So 
just like that, the Lopes in control, eight point lead. We'll see if they can capitalize on this. Erica Mattingly takes it up to the top of the key. Mattingly, like I said, has yet to make an impact in this one. Passes it off to Larson. Back to Hampel. Back to Mattingly. Slope's defense not giving in early on. That's Hample from downtown. She will not get the roll. Rebounded. And it's gonna be a travel by Kristen Moore, the forward. So a lot of early mistakes by Kansas City in this one as they look to snap a three game losing streak. So far, four turnovers for the Ruse. They're just being a little, little careless on the offensive side, but uh, GCU taking uh, <laughs> full advantage of the mistakes on the side of UMKC. It looks like Taylor Caldwell is going to check back into this one. It's going to be a K Kavita Akula taking it up back to Caldwell. And an easy two-point layup from Carla Balagay. Well, Balagay, just like her Spaniard counterpart, Laura Pierre, does a great job driving to the lane. Left hand off the glass. Beautiful drive by Carla. Making it look way too easy. The second team foul from the Lopes there. As the ball's quickly shuffled in to Kristen Moore. Going up for the layup there and missing was Christina Soriano. Top of the key, it's Miller. Akula from downtown, she's got it. Nothing but net for Kavita Akula. And the Lopes with a commanding 20 to seven lead as we enter two minutes left here in the first quarter. Well, that's what you want from Kavita Akula, such a great three-point shooter. Been struggling a little bit this season with her three-point percentage, but seems like she's starting to turn things around here in this first early going of this that's game. That's Emily Ivory for three, no good. And the Ruse will stay in possession. Deja Daniel re-enters this one. Deja, a hot start, six points early on as she makes her second appearance here in the first quarter. It's Erica Mattingly. Passes it off to Kristen Moore. Back to Mattingly. Lopes defense just not letting up in this one. That's from downtown. That one's gonna be good from Kristen Moore, the forward. As the Ruse cut the lead in half. Nice spot on three by Moore in the corner, cut into this lead a little bit. Lopes looking to get those points right back. That shot is no good. So perfect opportunity for the Ruse to get right back in this one. Erica Mattingly trying to make her presence felt in this one. That layup no good, does not get the foul call. As pass inside to Miller. Across court from downtown, it is no good. Taylor Howard trying to make her first impact in this one, does not get the roll. As we are just under a minute here in to play here in the first quarter. That three is no good from Moore. Trying to duplicate what she just did a few seconds ago. As the Lopes have possession with just 30 seconds left. It's Akula from the top of the key. We'll pass it off to Caldwell. We'll pass it inside to Deja Daniel who takes it up, does not get the foul call. But the ball will stay with the Lopes, last touched by Emily Ivory, the guard out of Davenport, Iowa. As Miller will be subbed out for AJ Cephas here with about 16 seconds to go. An impressive start for the Lopes, Phil. Yeah, very impressive. This is exactly what Coach Powell wanted for this team to start out against UMKC, a very high scoring squad. Out to Caldwell. Look for the quick shot here. We'll see. There's only two seconds left on the shot cock, and it's going to be no good. 
Ball does not make contact with the rim. So the Ruse will take over here. It's gonna look like it's gonna be full court press here for the Lopes. Not wanting the Ruse to cut into this 10 point lead early on. No foul called, shot up, no good. And that will do it here in the first quarter of play. So after one quarter of play, the Lopes in front by a score of 20 to 10. A large start here for the Lopes as they look to separate themselves early on from the Ruse again. It's time for the upcoming schedule brought to you by BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. Well, tomorrow night, men's volleyball taking on number five Pepperdine. You got baseball opening up their season against Wichita State. Uh, you've got well, uh, Ba uh, <laughs> women's basketball taking on Chicago State on Saturday night. You can catch the baseball game, the men's volleyball game, and the women's basketball game, and the Ball State game on Saturday right here on GCU TV. A lot of action coming your way on GCU TV. A whole lot of action. You and I will be on the Ball State game on Saturday. Saturday morning. So, the, the Lopes again with a 20 to 10 lead entering the second quarter. Deja Daniel, was six, the first six points of the game early on for the Lopes. Laura Pierre does not seem to be bothered by that thumb. Things just clicking on all cylinders here for the Lopes early on. Yeah, they're playing very, very well, scoring a lot of points, getting some great play. I talked to her, talked about her at the top of the game. Deja Daniel was going to be a threat for this team. She's got six points so far. And, uh, well, you can't see if Kavito Kula's got a three. Taylor Caldwell's playing great. Sharon Miller spot up to knock one down. This team is playing at the efficiency level that I expected to see at the beginning of the season, but it's nice that they're making that turnaround. This is a team that believes they can beat anybody in the WAC, and I think if they come out playing like this against everybody else, they're, they're going to be a threat. So we'll see how the Lopes come out in the second quarter of play. It's Lopes 20, the Ruse 10. We'll be right back here on GCU TV. and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Masters of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career, while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. So back here, back here on GCU TV, Laura Pierre takes it up as we start the second quarter of play. Lopes and a commanding 20 to 10 leave as Caldwell passes it off. That's from downtown. They're not gonna get the roll. That was number 21. Velna Vera says, the Ruse looked to answer back here. That's Hample from the top of the key. Passes it off to Moore. Back to Erica Mattingly. Has yet to get on the scoreboard in this one as Hample takes it down low, unable to come away with the layup there. She does get fouled on the way down and she will shoot too. Yeah, with Erica Manningly, even though she's been she's been starting out slow, you don't want to take advantage. You don't. I'm sorry. You want to take advantage of that. You don't want to be laxed about it because Erica Manningly is a sleeping giant, and the last thing you want to do is wake a sleeping giant. That was first one's good from Hample. Hample leading the ruse in scoring early on in this one, just four points. But again, Erica Manningly. Unable to get on the scoreboard early on in this one. It looks like Pierre is going to take it out again. Just an eight point lead now for the Lopes. Again, the Lopes trying to separate themselves from the Ruse early on. Suffered a big loss on January 19th in Missouri to these Ruse as they look to split the season series. Pierre to Davis. 
It's gonna be Daniel, unable to draw the foul there. In the paint, pass out. That's Taylor Caldwell. Pass inside to Daniel again. And she's gonna get the call there. Does not get the N1 as she does not get the friend, friendly roll. But she will shoot two. Well, that play doesn't start if Laura Pira quits on that inbound. She hustled over, tossed it into Taylor Caldwell, and Caldwell was able to spot it up to Daniel. First one good there from Daniel Lopes playing very aggressively on both offense and defense, and that's how you win ball games, Phil. Second one good, so Daniel now with eight points in this one as the Lopes take back their 10 point lead. Full court press here, just like they did in the first quarter. Looking to keep the same pace with Erica Mattingly. Have been all over her early on. Mattingly takes it herself off the glass and the bank was open on that shot. Erica Mattingly finally on the scoreboard in this one. Yeah, great drive by Erica Mattingly and an even better finish off the glass. But how about this press break by the Lopes? Unsuccessful as the Ruse take it back. So another opportunity here for the Ruse as they look to get right back in this one. That shot no good. They get the rebound, get a second chance effort. That layup no good. So two chances there for the Ruse. Coming away unsuccessful as Taylor Caldwell takes it up the key. That is 4-2, no good. So the Lopes looking for the quick shot there. Manning Lee in the corner. Passes it off to Ajak. Back to Manning Lee at the top of the key. Who's looking for a big shot here? No good there, that was Kristen Moore as the Lopes take it back. Taylor Caldwell. We'll see what she does here after making that quick shot last time. Back to Laura Pierre at the top of the key. Gets the pick from Daniel. The shot from the foul line, no good. As the ball rolls out of bounds and it will be Ruse ball. As Akula enters the game, Taylor Caldwell will take a seat. And it looks like Sharon Miller is gonna enter this ball game again. So Emily Ivory, the guard, takes it up the key, off to Erica Mattingly. So we'll see after that shot if Mattingly can get going here in the second quarter. Her team only trails by eight. Pass to Ajak from downtown, it is good. So just like that, it's a five point game. Ajak on the scoreboard with that three as that ball is quickly taken up by the Lopes. As that was number 21, Velna Veris gets the foul. And it looks like she will shoot two here. I like the aggression from Varis driving in and getting the foul early. Just then get UMKC into foul trouble. They should be fine. So both three free throw attempts miss there as the Ruse have a golden opportunity here. That's Moore from the top of the key. Looking for Erica Mattingly again. Back to Moore. Foul called there. So the Roops will keep it. Mattingly under the basket. 
pass it into Moore. Does not get the foul on that call. All right, that was a good block by Carla Balagave. Making her presence known inside. The ball will stay with Kansas City as Mattingly will inbound it again. And a little miscommunication there as the ball will go the other way. Lopes possession. So I don't know what happened there as Erica Mattingly miscommunicates there with Emily Ivory. Looks like maybe Ivory was cutting to the basket as the ball was out of her hands. And like you said, Jack, it's a miscommunication. To the benefit of Lopes, Laura Pierre almost <laughs> made the shot on that pass to Kavita Kula. And an easy layup there for Taylor Larson. So it's a three-point game as we have a timeout on the court and a timeout coming here at GCU TV. We'll be right back here on GCU TV. Back here on GCU TV. Kansas City Rue is coming out of the gate strong here in the second quarter. A 9-2 run to start the quarter. It's only a three-point lead now for the Lopes as they look to get going. This is once a 10-point lead for yeah. Grand Canyon. Well, I said at the top, start strong, end strong, and the Lopes are, well, they're not really ending strong right now. They, they've come into the second quarter with a 10-point lead. Now it's been cut down to four. Wide open lane there, that's Sharon Miller. Does not get the foul call, does not get the rebound. As it'll be Ruse ball. So the Ruse with an opportunity to tie up this game. Full court press for the Lopes. Remember, offense and defensively were fantastic in the first quarter, looking to do the same right now. Laura Pierre going one-on-one -on -one with Erica Mattingly. Mattingly with just two points in this one, still looking to get going. That's Ajak. And that was Carla Balagay with the foul. AJ Cephas re-enters the game. Ball's taken up by number 15, Taylor Larson, the guard out of Huxley, Iowa. Back to Mattingly. Top of the key, brilliant pass there to Moore. But right before that layup goes in, she's called for traveling, so the Lopes will recover the ball. So the Lopes looking to separate themselves from the Ruse yet again, only a three point game. Cephas to Pierre, again, full court press from Kansas City. Laura Pierre. And that's Sharon Miller down low. So an easy layup there for Miller. Lopes back up by five. Emily Ivory takes it up. Pass to Ajak. Back to Kristen Moore. Taylor Larson thought she had a shot there. Mattingly inside pass to Ajak. And the ball trickles out of bounds. We'll stay with the ruse. Just talk for a second about Sharon Miller inside again. Just like Deja Daniels, so, so proficient inside close to the basket. Taylor Larson thinking about the three-point shot there. Takes it down low, is intercepted by Taylor Caldwell. See if she 
Slows things down there, she does. A cool up from downtown, no good. So the Roos take it the other way. Again, only a five point game with about four and a half to play here in the first half. That's Ajak for three. She's got it, nothing but net on that shot and it is a two point ball game here in Phoenix. I would have loved to have seen on that last possession for the Lopes, Taylor Caldwell just drive into the lane, but she's such a good teammate. She wants to get everybody involved. Akula to Miller, foul called. Good for the alley-oop on that one. So the Ruse with full court press there, almost backfired on them as Akula had a wide open lane as she looked for Sharon Miller on that pass. I mean, you, you love the unselfish play, but sometimes Taylor Ka or Kavita Kula right there could have had an opportunity at the basket. Laura Piera for three, no good. Did not get off the shot she intended there. As it's Ajak in the corner back to Mattingly. Inside pass to Kristen Moore. And she will not get the roll there as it trickles away from the rim. Back to Moore, she gets her own rebound. Back inside, does not get the foul call, but she does get the layup. It is a tie ball game, 24-24. Cool has got it at half court. Cephas to Caldwell. Caldwell inside. Foul is called, we'll stay with Grand Canyon here as they look to regain the lead. A 14-4 run for Kansas City here in the second quarter. So it'll be Caldwell underneath. Finds Piera, takes it inside. No look pass to Miller, she does not get the roll. Miller's so, gotta come up, come in with that one. That was a beautiful pass by Laura Piera. Miller's gotta finish down low. Everything clicking for the Lopes in the first quarter, not so much here in the second quarter. So Kristen Moore will shoot from the line here, looking to give the Ruse their first lead of the night. And they got it. So it looks like Deja Daniel will re-enter this one. Looking to add a spark to the Lopes. A 15-4 run now for the Ruse. Piera finds Akula, takes it into the corner, finds Caldwell. Back to Deja Daniel, puts it up and gets the foul. So just what she was looking for there, she'll shoot from the line as she tries to tie up this ball game. They're gonna not need to start relying on Deja Daniel Moore in this quarter. And she's able to tie things up, but we'll see to get some scoring going if they wanna carry a lead into halftime. So Deja Daniel now in double digits with 10 points in this one. That's Ajak from the top of the key. Ajak has made her presence felt here in the second quarter. From downtown, that one is good as well. So Brooke Hample with her second three-point shot of the night. It's 29-26 Roos. So just under three minutes to play here in the second quarter. Kula has it from the top of the key. Passes off to Caldwell. Separates herself from Hample. In for the easy layup. And it's a one-point game. Just a great job by Kavita Kula to slow things down and give this team an opportunity. She finds Taylor Caldwell wide open for the layup. So Hample pushes it off to Ajak. Back to Kristen Moore. Finds Jonay Johnson, back to Ajak. Ajak takes it in the paint, takes her shot, no good, and the Lopes rebound. So Taylor Caldwell will take it up. Quick pass to Daniel, and floats it in, and the Lopes regain the lead. So Daniel now with 12 points after that easy bucket. It's a one point lead for the Lopes. Another timeout on the floor, we'll take a timeout here on GCU TV. It's the Lopes 30, the Ruse 29. We'll be right back on GCU TV. 
an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com. Back here on GCU TV on this Valentine's Day edition of GCU Women's Basketball. A one point lead here for the Lopes. Deja Daniel making her presence felt right away early on in the second quarter, that shot from downtown, and just like that, the Roos take the lead right back. That's Kristen Moore, the forward, with the three-point shot. So a 32-30 lead for the Roos. Quick pass there to Daniel. By Akula, gets away. That's Bree Beck. As she misses the three-point shot, trickles out of bounds. Lopes ball. So Cephas will dish it in. Piera with a quick pass back to Cephas to Caldwell, back to Piera. Lopes offense trying to take out this Ruse defense. It's gonna be Caldwell from the top of the key. Havoc's trying to get their Lopes back in this one. Davis back to Piera from the top of the key. Goes in aggressive, takes the shot, and gets the foul. So well, Pierre will shoot 4-2 here as they look to even up the score. Well, that's what they want. Should I get some penetration towards the basket, draw some fouls. GCU is, has gotten UMKC in the bonus. Of course, on the opposite side, GCU is also in the bonus against UMKC. But this is where the Lopes need to kind of take advantage. Get inside, draw fouls, and beat them at the free throw line. GCU right now shooting 29% from three-point land and only 40% from field goal, so. That one misses. Piera still looking to get going in this one. Has been aggressive early on. Only has three points so far to show for it. Shot there from the Ruse, no good. Rebounded by Caldwell. Takes it aggressively up the court. Back to Piera to slow things down. Back to Caldwell from the top of the key. Finds Akula in the corner from downtown, and she does not get the roll. That is not a bad look at all for Kavita Akula. An unfortunate roll for the senior, but I gotta say, let Kavita keep shooting in that corner. So this will be the guard, Jone Johnson, out of Chicago, Illinois, taking things up here. New look here for the Ruse. As we are just under 35 seconds left to play here in the first half. Johnson dishes it to Ivory. Back to Hampel. Johnson in the corner. And a travel by Johnson will give the Lopes possession with about 18 seconds to go. So a one point lead for the Ruse. Lopes look to go into halftime with a lead here in Phoenix. Full court press by Kansas City. Piera finds Akula. Lopes will most likely wait for the last shot here. About seven seconds to go. Piera at the top of the key. Aggressive inside. Gets it stripped away and that looks like it will end the first half here in Phoenix. So the Lopes came out strong with a 20 to 10 lead in the first quarter. The Ruse with a one point lead as we enter halftime. 32-31 Kansas City. And again, Phil, it was Deja Daniel early on. She came back in the second quarter of play with four points right off the bat. But the Lopes defense has seemed to slow down in the second quarter. Well, it seemed to slow down and their offense has slowed down as well with it only scoring 11 points that half, whereas UMKC rattled off 22. I mean, it's it's, very clear that UMKC's offense came out charging and GCU was kind of lax at Davis School, taking advantage of that 10 point lead. But at the end of that half, the Lopes started playing strong again and they started making some shots. They were slow, they were picking their, their options. They were making, taking advantage when they had the opportunity. Right now, the, the Lopes have uh, 
eight points off turnovers, whereas UMKC has eight turnovers. So the Lopes scoring points when given the opportunity, and they just got to stay strong through the entire quarter. They need a strong third quarter or they are going to lose this game. It was Erica Mattingly who we said coming into this game was going to be the forefront for the Ruse. It's been AWOL Ajak who stepped up big time for the Ruse in the second quarter. Well, it's Ajak and Kristen Moore. Moore's got 10 points leading UMKC right now. And of course, Ajak from beyond the arc has been knocking him down. That's really what you can say that's been the difference maker for UMKC in this second quarter is they're knocking down three point shots. And GCU is not knocking down any shots that aren't coming from inside the paint. So we'll see if the Lopes can rebound in the second half. It's 32-31 in favor of the Ruse. Let's enjoy halftime on this Valentine's Day edition on GCU TV. Your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career, while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. Today, you can learn anywhere and anytime, giving kids a look into the technological advances that pushed you forward. Being strong and compassionate makes you a role model through this formative period in their lives. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders and innovators to reach for their dreams. You're giving them the tools they need to achieve them. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Or whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Curiosity fuels you. It helps you understand the world around you. It's your guide through life. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Change is difficult. But Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. While businesses are being transformed by artificial intelligence and analytics, GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation and make sense of the world. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems and sharing your insights, you're helping to build a better tomorrow for you, your community, and your family. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Back here on GCU TV, halftime here in Phoenix. It is a 32-31 lead for the Kansas City Roos. A lot of action happening here on campus at Grand Canyon University. A lot of things kicking off. We have baseball starting this weekend. We had softball kickoff last weekend, their first tournament of the year at the GCU Softball Stadium, playing the likes of Oklahoma, San Diego State, Syracuse. A lot of fun things happening on campus, Phil. Yeah, and men's volleyball is starting conference play. The Wolves women's basketball is wrapping up their season. Men's basketball is also wrapping up their season, getting ready for the WAC tournament. So between the months of today and the end of March, we've got a lot of sports going on. And softball kicked off, like we said, this past weekend. Men's basketball against New Mexico State also took place. But for more, let's turn it over to Luke Larkin for tonight's Lopes Report. Thanks, guys. 
Last weekend, softball hit the ground running as the GCU kickoff tournament was in full swing. In the first game, sophomore Lexi Coons came in relief to pitch five and a third innings, allowing only two hits and registering six strikeouts. The Lopes were able to rally back from 3-0 in the second, thanks to a two-run home run from senior Sierra Smith in the third and freshman Savannah Tourville going yard in the fifth for her first collegiate home run. GCU welcomed back the Oklahoma Sooners for Faith and Family Night, where the Lopes got off to a quick start on Tourville's first at bat, going yard to left. But the Sooners roared back in the fifth, scoring six runs. Finally, they finished the weekend with a doubleheader. First against San Diego State, where sophomore transfer Ryan Denhart pitched a complete game. In the nightcap, the pitchers stole the show, both allowing two runs to begin the game, but the Syracuse Orange would win in a walk-off. Baseball starts their season this weekend as they host the GCU Classic. Tomorrow night, the club will face Wichita State on Fox Sports Arizona. Pre-game starts at 5.30. They continue their weekend Saturday with Ball State, and on Monday, they conclude the tournament against Stanford. Both those games will be right here on GCU TV. Make sure to tune in for all the festivities as GCU celebrates the newly finished Brazel Field at GCU Ballpark. Men's basketball is on the road tonight as they take on Kansas City and Chicago State on Saturday. Both those games will be on the WAC Digital Network. Men's volleyball looks to get conference play started in the right direction after a difficult California road trip. They're in for a challenge as the Lopes host number five Pepperdine at Antelope Gymnasium. And finally, women's basketball looks to bounce back tonight after a difficult road trip. They'll continue on Saturday with a matinee against Chicago State. For this week's Lopes Report, I'm Luke Larkin. Thank you, Luke. Great Lopes report as always. And again, a very exciting weekend in softball and men's basketball. Softball, it was Savannah Torville with a huge weekend. Uh, two home runs, a huge home run against Oklahoma Friday night. You were on the call for that one, Phil. I was. Just a very fun weekend for softball and a huge weekend coming up for men's baseball. Yeah, you said it. I mean, uh, Savannah Torville and Ryan Denhart, the transfer from... Uh, the University of Maryland, both newcomers to the team, Tourville, a freshman, and uh, Denhart, the transfer. Denhart getting a complete game against San Diego State. And then Tourville, I mean, you hit a, uh, basically the game-winning home run against the University of Charlotte on opening night, and then you follow that up with a leadoff home run against the number four-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. I mean, you can't ask for any more. And then Denhart, like I said, throwing a complete game shutout against the, the Aztecs. It was a great weekend for softball. And a good I way was to on the, the call for the softball game. Ryan Denhart. First year transfer, sophomore year, coming in hot for the Lopes with that complete game shutout on San Diego State. Yeah. Uh, shortened game, they mercy ruled them. Yeah. Nine nothing against San Diego State. Had a brilliant game. Uh, it was, I believe, it was Cools on the start for the second game. Uh, Three two loss to Syracuse in extra innings. Tough loss, but a great play game by the Lopes. Uh, baseball starts this weekend Saturday, like we said. We're on the call against Wichita State. They start tomorrow, however, right here at the brand new reopening of GCU uh, Baseball Field. Uh, Andy Stankiewicz had a lot to say. Uh, we hooked up with uh, head coach Andy Stankiewicz. Hear what he had to say uh, about their season ahead. Take a look. Okay, hey, last year was a good year. I think anytime you can win a regular season, you know, in your conference, it's not easy to do. We've won it two years in a row, and, and now we know that we need more. We need to, we want to win the, the regular season. We want to get in the tournament, and we want to, we want to win the tournament. You know, we want to get to a regional. Obviously, I had a little bit of a letdown in the, in the WAC tournament as a program. Hopefully, we've grown and we'll be better ready, you know, better suited for we're getting in the WAC tournament this upcoming spring. Guys have come together really good. It's an older team, a lot of seniors here that have been through the fires a little bit here. They want to finish out their careers in college baseball. They want to finish it out really, really well. Pitching-wise, you know, we lost an entire weekend rotation. We lost Mick Warhoff, our closer. That's a hole to fill, but we do think the guys that we have here now are ready to step up and, and, and fill those, those needs for us. I like the depth in our pitching staff. There's some guys that can pitch. They know how to pitch. They're competitive. A lot of a lot of young men out playing professional baseball. You know, they have four guys drafted and, and two other guys signed as free agents. I think that's that's a good thing. You know, that we're able to 
to get some guys an opportunity to keep on playing past college, and um, we feel like that trend is going to continue. Like any D1 program, I'm not, I don't know that we're a whole lot different. It's just a lot of time, a lot of effort in the classroom, you know, in the weights, at, at practice. It's about showing up every day and working hard and getting better and trying to be a really good teammate and play your style of baseball, um, whatever it is. If you're a line drive hitter, be a line drive hitter. If you're throw 83 miles an hour, you're going to throw 83, but be really good at, at 83. We're sharing a tournament with the Angels of, of Anaheim here in town, and so we've got Wichita State for two, Ball State, and we have Stanford. So it's going to be pretty challenging right out of the gate. That's what we've always wanted. We want to push ourselves pretty quickly. We want to see where we're at. The GCU is so good about trying to build a fan experience. You know, to, to walk into a concrete concourse and, and walk up those stairs and look out over Brazzle Field. Just got a great feel to it. They've done some renovations now already and, and trying to get some nice seats a little closer to the field. And we're looking forward to great crowds. We couldn't be more excited about getting our students here on campus. And, um, we want to we fill up Brazzle. We want all of our students to be here and make a lot of noise. Great stuff there from head coach Andy Stankiewicz. You can catch the first baseball game of the season tomorrow night here in Phoenix, 6 p.m. on Fox Sports Arizona, and of course right here on GCU TV. So the Lopes look to get back in this one. 32-31 they trail as we enter the third quarter. We will be right back with second half action right here on GCU TV. State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. Hi, I'm Brittany, and this is our Ask GC. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brittany Holwin, and you should watch Ask GCU, where we answer your questions every week. And the points don't matter. Wait, what? Tune in every week for answers to be questioned. Where we answer your questions in a common, prof in a, all right. In a professional manner. <laughs> Tweet hashtag Ask GCU to get your question featured. Thunder in the heart of Phoenix, GCULopes.com. Back here on GCU TV as we look to kick things off in the second half. It'll be interesting to see what head coach Nicole Powell does here as her Lopes got off to a hot start. Got a little bit cold in the second quarter, but we'll see what she does here in the third quarter as we readdress the Sanderson Ford three keys to the game. Well, the first key of the game was to slow down Erica Mattingly, and they've done it so far. Mattingly's only got two points in the game so far, so Lopes doing a good job. Still, like I said initially, you want to keep an eye on Erica Mattingly because sleeping giants, you don't want to wake them, and Erica Mattingly is quite the sleeping giant, leading the whack right now in points per game. Next, start strong, finish strong. They didn't really start strong, but they, for the most part, finished strong in the second quarter. The whole first half was fantastic. Lopes carried a heavy lead. Love to see that energy. Love to see that uh, intensity come back here in the second half. And then finally get back on track outside of breaking the, the three-game losing streak. Get back on track in the game. You're up 10 to come into the second quarter, and now you're down one. So Lopes losing their momentum there, but looking to pick it up here in the second half. So Erica Mattingly kicking things off for the Ruse. 
like you just said. A dark horse in this one has yet to get going as that shot misses. Mattingly gets the rebound, gets the pass and one. So just like that, the Roos starting to separate themselves from the Lopes as that was Christine Moore with the two point shot. Well, it starts with Mattingly fighting for the rebound off the missed shot by Larson and giving, giving uh, V Hill an opportunity to go to the line here. Misses the shot as the Lopes take up. Caldwell finds Akula. Back to Caldwell at the top of the key. Lopes looking for a big shot right out of the gate. Shot no good there from Deja Daniel. Trickled out of bounds, but the Lopes will obtain possession. Inbound pass to Piera. Passes it to Cephas at the top of the key. Goes in for the layup and gets fouled. So she does not hit the layup. She will go to the line here as the Lopes trail this one by three. Well, this is something GCU did in the first half pretty well was draw fouls and get to the line. 12 free throws. This is going to be 13 and 14. 12 free throws for the Lopes so far. So Cephas misses the first free throw attempt. Still looking to get on the scoreboard in this one. So it looks like Ajax re-enters this ball game. Second shot is good by Cephas. Two point game again as Mattingly takes it up. Quick toss to Ajax. Back to Mattingly for three and nothing but net on that shot. As Mattingly looks to be unleashed here in the third quarter. Five point lead for Kansas City. Piera to Daniel for the layup. So great execution there for the Lopes. Well, it's that court vision by Laura Piera. She saw Deja Daniel wide open. Akula had her back to Daniel, but she's able to find Piera, and Piera finds Daniel for a wide open layup. Ajak at the top of the key. Finds V Hill, takes the shot. No good. Ball stays with the ruse. So great execution there by Piera and Daniel to get the shot off. We'll see if the defense can step up here as they only trail this one by three. Again, at one point had a 10 point lead. Tampa unable to connect on the layup. Caldwell takes it up. Finds Deja Daniel, does not get the shot off there. Unlucky break there for Deja Daniel as Mattingly gets the toss. Slows things down at the top of the key. Lee Hill finds Hampel. Back to Mattingly. Sits with five points now. As she takes another shot from downtown. That one no good. A little off balance there for Erica Mattingly. Seemed a little forced there as Akula takes it up the key. Pass inside to Cephas. Looking for the foul there, does not get it. As the ball is stripped by the Ruse. Ajak from the top of the key. Finds Larson. Back to Hample from downtown, no good. Rebound by the Hoos, put right back up by V Hill. GCU's got to come down with rebounds here if they want to beat this team. So full court press by the Roos, and that was just a sloppy play as the Roos take advantage. Yeah, well needed timeout here by Coach Powell. Lopes got to regroup here, or they are going to be down by a lot very quickly. So a timeout on the floor. A timeout it is a seven point lead now for the Roos as we will be right back here on GCU TV. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it, it was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. 
We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit GCU. So back here on GCU TV, Kansas City coming out of the gate strong. They now lead this one by seven, 41 34. The Lopes looking to pick up their offense in this one, Phil. It's not looking good so far here in the third quarter. Yeah, UMKC right now is just playing more aggressively than GCU is right now. They're taking advantage of lackadaisical passes. They're taking advantage of second chance points. Right now, UMKC has nine second chance points. GCU's got three. Lopes need to settle down here and try to find some, some baskets and limit their mistakes here in the second quarter, or third quarter, second half. There you go. I knew I'd get it. A quick pass there to Miller. Unsuccessful as Mattingly. Fine sample out to Ajak from downtown. No good. Foul is called on Kansas City, so the Lopes will regain possession as they are looking for a big shot here. Again, once led this game by 10, currently trail it by seven. Balagay inbounds to Piera. As she is quickly. Someone's gotta come up and help her on that, on that press break. The entire Arena knows that the ball is going to Laura Piera, and no one is there to come in to help her when she's double teamed. And they got away, thankfully, with a travel call, but Laura can't do it all by herself. Piera finds Miller. And Akula will take it at the top of the key. Lopes looking to slow things down here with about six and a half to play in the quarter. She finds Balagay at the top of the key, no good. Aggressive rebound there from Laura Piera as Akula finds Sharon Miller inside for the layup. So Miller connects and it's a five point game. Well that's what they needed. They finally needed some points on the board and they go back to old reliable Sharon Miller. A nice inside pass by Kavito Akula. They finally slow things down and don't force passes inside and find a good one to Sharon. Hample finds Mattingly. Rebounded there by Miller. Finds Piera. Aggressive defense early on in the second half by the Roots. Laura Piera playing aggressive as she has all night. Finds Miller from the top of the key. She does not get the friendly roll there. Lopes catching some tough breaks on their shot so far here in the third quarter. Mattingly from downtown. From way downtown there is Mattingly. No good. Rebounded by the Lopes as Balagay picks that one up. Piera finds Akula. Back to Balagay at the top of the key. Piera inside, finds Akula. No good from three. So the Lopes unable to connect early on in this one. They only trail by five as they continue to look for that big shot. Mattingly at the top of the key, finds Ajak. Hill. Tosses it to Mattingly. Looking for the inside pass, gets blocked by Piera. Regains possession, finds the hole, gets stripped. Ball handled there by Balagay. She finds Akula and the Lopes will take it the other way. So Piera looks to control things from the top of the key. Finds Miller, looking for the easy layup pass. And she connects again. Sharon Miller with her second basket. In as many seconds. Well, then there you go. Laura Piera finding Sharon inside for another easy basket. This is what the Lopes need to do. Continue to get stops and find as many points as they can. Ample stuff there at the rim. Miller rebounds, tosses it to Laura Piera. A one possession game again here in Phoenix. We'll see if the Lopes look for the big player. Play it safe with two. Balagay at the top of the key. Back to Akula. Looking for Piera. 
as Erica Mattingly is swatted away. So a breakaway play there for the Ruse. Erica Mattingly looking for the easy two point layup. That's just smart great. defense there from Laura Piera, Phil. That is just great defense and great hustle by Laura Piera. She wants to win. You can see she wants to win. She's all over the floor running around doing a fantastic job. Huge block blocked by Laura Piera. Things are getting good on this Valentine's Day edition of GCU Women's Basketball. Three-point game as we take a break here on GCU TV. We have been the experts in clean since 1945. We help businesses keep their facilities cleaner, healthier, greener, and safer. We are passionate about what we do and are committed to making your workplace environment the cleanest and healthiest it can be. Our armed forces heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your... Back here on GCU TV. It's only a three point game now with about three and a half to play in the third quarter. Laura Piera finding Kieran Miller on the last two possessions for two easy layups as it's a three point game again. Again, the Lopes looking to regain the lead and looking to separate themselves from the roots, something that they haven't been able to do since the first quarter, Phil. Well, when you're it was so close coming into this third quarter and it looked like UMKC was gonna start running away with it, but the third quarter to me is more about maintaining. You either maintain the lead or you maintain a close deficit, and then in the fourth quarter, you really start to turn it on. Lopes were forcing a lot of passes early in the third quarter, but now they're starting to slow it down and find easy points when they come. Couldn't have said it better myself. That's Ajak from downtown. I know Aja, I, I know she missed that one, but you cannot leave her open. She's been hitting that shot all night long. Again, the Roos have done a good job separating themselves from the Lopes many times during this game tonight as that ball is stripped away. So the Lopes lose possession on this one as it looks like Ajak will inbound to Mattingly. Well, good hustle by Taylor Caldwell to try to get that deflected pass, but unfortunately it dribbled out of bounds. Three-point shot, no good there from Emily Ivory. So again, the Lopes looking for the big shot. Taylor Caldwell takes it up. Looking for the quick points there as she passes it to Cephas. Down in the corner is Laura Piera. Back to Cephas, and she gets the foul. So going up for the layup there, AJ Cephas gets the foul, and she will shoot from the free throw line. Well, this is where GCU can really cut into the deficit. It's from the free throw line. So that one good by Cephas finally gets on the board in this one. So she knocks down both her free throws. It's a one point game again here in Phoenix. Lopes looking to stay close here with Kansas City. Like I said, this is all about maintaining the lead or maintaining a small deficit. And right now, GCU able to cut into the deficit and get the game back there going their way. Ivory hands it off to Hample. Finds Mattingly. Havoc's really looking to distract Kansas City, sitting right behind us. As Mattingly finds Ajak. Unbalanced three there, no good. As Taylor Caldwell We'll take it back up. That shot seemed very forced by Awal Ijak. Cephas inside again gets fouled again as the Lopes have an opportunity to regain the lead as Cephas will shoot from the line yet again. 50% of the Lopes points coming from inside the paint. 20 points for the Lopes of their 40. And this is what they need to keep doing, forcing it inside.
So Akula will enter. Piero will take a seat. As Cephas gets the roll there. And we are all knotted up at 41. So Mattingly takes it up. Mattingly, though has had spurts in this one, has yet to really get going in this one. 23 points in her last affair against GCU. As that shot is up and in. Bank open on that shot from Christina Soriano. Yeah, great job inside by Soriano to use her height and the backboard to find some points for UMKC. AJ Cephas loses that one. Back in control of the ruse as Mattingly takes it up. Aggressive going down in the paint as she gets the foul. Yeah, no charge call. It's going to be a defensive foul on Kavita Akula. I guess it's going to be a shooting foul as well. I don't think Mattingly was going in the act of shooting, but regardless, she'll go to the line. Makes her first attempt. Now has six points in this one. Miller re-enters this one. Deja Daniel takes a seat as Mattingly nails both free throw attempts. It's a four point lead again for Kansas City. Lopes look to rebound in a big way here. Caldwell at the top of the key. Finds Cephas, who finds Akula from downtown. Good! It was gonna happen sooner or later. Kavita Akula was gonna find a wide open three and a beautiful pass by AJ Cephas and Akula's got her second three of the night. Couldn't have drawn it up any better as it's a one point game yet again. Erica Mattingly at the top of the key going one on one here with Taylor Caldwell. And she will get fouled yet again. So it looks like Erica Mattingly will be headed back to the free throw line here in Phoenix. So Mattingly sinks both shots yet again. Still a one possession game. Caldwell finds Akula, who finds Miller, shuffles it to Cephas, back to Caldwell at the top of the key. Lopes trying to fend off the full court press from Kansas City. Caldwell. Caldwell with three to shoot. Unsuccessful as it's rebounded there by Ajak, finds Mattingly at the top of the key. As she'll slow things down here, waits for the last shot, about 10 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Kansas City controlling most of the quarter as they lead this one by three. Went into half with a one point lead, two seconds to go. Shot off by Hample and she gets it right at the buzzer. So things clicking on all cylinders right now for Kansas City as they have a five point lead as we enter the fourth quarter here in Phoenix. Get the best gear to show off your Lope pride. Go to lopeshops.gcu.edu to find everything GCU, from the newest apparel to the coolest accessories. Use promo code GCUTV25 to get 25% off for being a GCU TV viewer. Let's paint the valley purple. Lopes up. So we will head An exciting to exciting destination quarter. for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com. So right back here on GCU TV. We enter the fourth quarter. It's a 49-44 lead for the Kansas City Kangaroos. Phil, another impressive performance by the Roos in the third quarter. Well, it's a little bit more of a lead now for Kansas City, a five-point lead as opposed to their one-point lead starting the, the second half. This is where GCU's got to start to close the gap early on in this fourth quarter and then really put it on 
full force effort in the second half of the fourth quarter, five point deficit is not that bad. Especially the way the third quarter started, where UMKC was really starting to hit shots and GC was struggling from the, well, really everywhere. But they get a nice three from Kavito Kula. Their bench is playing well. They've got 13 points off the bench as opposed to the Ruse eight. They've got 20 points in the paint. Keep utilizing the paint. Find your shot. There's no need to force shots early. They were doing that early on in the third quarter, but when they slowed things down and were starting to really work their offense, well, GC started finding points. And again, it's Erica Mattingly coming into this one as the dark horse in that arsenal for Kansas City. Laura Pierre has been able to shut her down thus far in this one. She hands it off to Balagay, back to Pierre at the top of the key. Lopes looking for the quick shot. Back to Balagay, to Pierre, loses it. As she takes that shot from downtown, will not get the roll there. Rebounded there by Ajak, back to Mattingly. Lopes defense has to step up here. Nine minutes left in this one, they trail by five. Piera versus Mattingly one on one. That pass inside and that is going to be missed there by number 12, Christina Soriano. Pass inside to Balagay. She's gonna take it herself and does not get the call. So the Lopes having a tough time getting that foul call from the officials here tonight. Yeah, clean block there that time by Soriano. Another fellow, fellow Spaniard on the floor for UMKC to go with GCU's two. Piera takes the shot herself there, misses, rebounded by Kansas City. Mattingly gonna take it herself here aggressively with the easy layup. Erica Mattingly making it look easy on that one as Piera's quickly stripped there by Ivory. So the Ruse looking to take full control in this one with about eight and a half to play. Lopes looking to strip it away there, unsuccessful. Hample finds Mattingly at the top of the key. About 10 seconds to shoot here on the shot clock. Ivory from the top of the key, from way downtown, no good. Rebounded there by Piera, easy rebound there for Laura, and it stripped right away as Hample is gonna go in for the layup. As she gets the foul from Piera and she will head to the line. So Laura Piera having a rough couple of seconds here. It looks like Piera's thinking drive before she dribbles and you know she's getting balls tipped from behind her and Lopes gotta control possession here. Stop forcing shots. They, they're, they're not settling down here in this second half. They're forcing shots early, and it's causing turnovers. And, and now you see UMKC starting to take advantage of it. So AJ Cephas and Taylor Caldwell will re-enter this one. Ample is leading the charge for Kansas City. 12 points in this one, make it 13. As it is an eight point lead for Kansas City. Pierre takes it up, trying to find Caldwell on that play to no avail as that pass is out of bounds. It looks like it may have been tipped out of bounds, but either way, a bit of a risky pass from Laura Pierre. Pierre to Cephas in the paint. From downtown, that one is no good. That's what I'm talking about, forcing shots. Ample takes it up, finds Mattingly. Again, the ruse really slowing things down here. Trying to waste as much time on the game clock as they can. Ample inside, looks for the layup, and the ball gets stuck between the rim and the backboard. You don't see that every day. I think that's, a, that's good luck, Jack. That's a good assumption on your part. We'll see. Looks like the Ruse will stay in possession. Mattingly will inbound it. She finds more, gets blocked by Cephas, and the Lopes are in possession. 
Sierra takes it up the court, finds Deja Daniel. Cephas, shot no good there. Again, does not get the foul from the official. So Mattingly takes it up. Just other seven minutes left to go here in Phoenix on this Valentine's Day. Kristen Moore finds Ivory to Hample in the corner. From downtown is Ivory and that shot is good. So it's an 11 point lead now for Kansas City. As the Lopes really have to get going here with about six and a half to play. It's Varis down in the paint. Finds Daniel, shot no good. Rebounded by Mattingly, but the ball goes out of bounds. So, so the Lopes remain in possession. Again, looking for a big shot here. Team down by 11 with six and a half to go as a timeout is called on the court and we will take a timeout here. It's an 11 point game here in Phoenix and we'll be right back here on GCU TV. Our armed forces heroism, courage and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. Back here on GCU TV. Havoc's getting pumped up on this Valentine's Day. Six and a half minutes to go. It's an 11 point lead for Kansas City. The Lopes really have to get going here if they want any chance of splitting the season series with Kansas City, Phil. Well, and also breaking their three game losing streak at home would be perfect at their first win in February on Valentine's Day, but it seems like it's gonna be the way this game's going, unless GCU starts to really pick things up here after this timeout, it's gonna be a bit of a uh, disappointing Valentine's Day. Did we mention it's Valentine's Day? In case you forgot. It is Valentine's Day. That's right. February 14th. But again, the Lopes. Looking to come alive here with six and a half minutes to play. Akula for three, gets it! So just like that, the Lopes look to spark their team up with that three from Akula, it's 55-47. Now Akula knocks down a quick three. This is what GCU needs now. They gotta get a stop and get another basket. So Hample at the top of the key here. Finds Mattingly to Ivory. Read that three right before that timeout. Floats it up there for the easy two points. A 10 point game again with just under six minutes to go. So full court press again for Kansas City. Piera finds Akula, slows things down. Lopes want to get it right. Hample one on one with Piera. Finds Caldwell. Down underneath, Deja Daniel with the roll. So Deja Daniel coming alive here in the fourth quarter. It is a nine point game. So that's Excuse six, me, an eight point game. 16 points for Deja Daniel. Go back to what was working in the first half. Going inside to Deja Daniel against Sariano. Finish. Shot is good there by Hample. So a 10 point game yet again. Akula with the quick pass finds Piera. Lopes doing a good job at the moment of fending off this ruse defense. Piera, the pass to Cephas. Outside pass. Shuffled off there from Akula. Three is no good by Caldwell. As it is Kansas City's possession. Full court press by the Lopes now. Just under five minutes left in this one. In a game where the Lopes led by 10 after one. Kansas City currently leads by 10 with about four and a half to play in quarter number four. Mattingly inside, goes for the layup. 
As the ball is deflected out of bounds, ball stays with Kansas City. As Mattingly will now inbound. Inbound to Moore, finds Hample. Called well on Hample as Mattingly one on one with Laura Piera here. Shot clock at four, puts it up, no good. Rebounded by Piera. Takes it up, finds Akula. Back to Piera at the top of the key. Ropes taking their time on this possession as Caldwell sits at the top of the key. Finds Deja Daniel. Back to Caldwell. Shot clock at five. Cephas in the paint, no good. Shot ain't unable to go there for Cephas. Quick turnaround by the Ruse. That layup by yeah. Hample. And it's an 11 point game again. Full court press again for the Ruse, even when they're up by 11. As Akula gets the pass underneath to Daniel. Dangerous pass there, but they get the shot off and one by Deja Daniel. So Daniel continuing her hot streak here as the Lopes again and only trail by 11. Yeah, Daniel doing a great job taking advantage of Soriano getting the shot and a little fired up after the bucket. Hopefully she can knock down this free throw and get the Lopes back into a single digit deficit. So Daniel now with 18 points, has seven rebounds in this one. As she shoots from the line. And the three-point play is complete. Nine-point game yet again here in Phoenix. V. Hill from the top of the key finds Ivory. Kristen Moore takes it herself in for the layup. Lopes gotta be display there from Kristen Moore. Lopes gotta be more aggressive defensively and. Uh, Inside pass there, no good. So the Lopes not slowing things down on that last possession. May cost him here, Ivory. To Moore, we'll see what Moore does from the top of the key. Again, Erica Mattingly looking to get involved in this one. B Hill, top of the key, 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Ivory, off to Hample. So the Ruse balancing the ball out well in this possession. Wide open, Erica. Mattingly left wide open there in the corner as V Hill takes a shot for herself, no good. As Laura Piera gets fouled on the other end here. So it looks like Taylor Caldwell and Sharon Miller will re-enter this one with about two and a half minutes to play. And the timeout will be called on the court as we'll take a timeout here. Nine point game, two and a half minutes left to play on this Valentine's Day. We'll be right back here on GCU TV. Time washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want a lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, Back here on GCU TV, nine point game, two minutes and 23 seconds to go. Lopes offense looking to get going as well as their defense. Gonna take a team effort to make a comeback in this one. V Hill will take a seat for Kansas City as Caldwell will inbound it. She finds Akula at the top of the key. And she'll take the shot from downtown, no good there. Shot looked good, but Akula unable to come away with that one. Dangerous pass there to Kristen Moore. Unsuccessful as Cephas fights it off. 
Great heads up defense by AJ Cephas to turn around and deflect that pass. So Mattingly inbounds it. Ajak back in this one. As Moore fends off, tosses it back to Mattingly at the top of the key. One on one with Laura Piera again. This matchup has been fun to watch all night. Laura Piera just holding Mattingly to 11 points in this one. It's going to be Moore from downtown, no good. Rebounded there by Akula. Pass to Taylor Caldwell. Lopes running out of time in this one. Piera. Pass to Cephas. Pass to Caldwell. Gets away out of bounds. But it will remain Lopes' possession. Foul there. By number 22, Brooke Hample. It's a quick inbound pass to Piera, back to Caldwell. Three possession game as Caldwell unable to connect on that two point shot. So the Lopes defense really having to step up here with a minute and 20 left in this one. Manning League just gonna control the ball for now as time is on her side here in Phoenix. One on one with Caldwell. Piera now dealing with Hample on the end. Mattingly getting aggressive, going for the layup, unable to connect. Rebounded there by Ajak. And she will get the foul right as the shot clock expires. So unlucky break there for the Lopes as Ajak will shoot two. Jack gets the roll there. So a 12 point lead here for the Roos. As Ajak, who's been on fire all night, connects for those two free throw shots. Another timeout on the court. We'll take another timeout here. It is a 13 point game with just under a minute left here in the fourth quarter. Right here on GCU TV. Our armed forces' heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your... So back here on GCU TV, a 13 point lead for Kansas City with 58 seconds to go left here in the fourth quarter. And Phil, hot start for Grand Canyon. 20 to 10 lead entering the second quarter. Gave it right back in the second quarter and have yet to rebound since then. Well, one of the Sanderson forward three keys of the game was start strong, finish strong in the Lopes. Started strong in the first half, started strong to begin the second half and are unable to finish both sides. The second quarter, they went, were down. Now here in the fourth quarter, they're down. 13-point uh, deficit with 58 seconds to go is quite a, quite a big hill to climb. Great metaphor. Thank Great you. Metaphor. Thank you. I'll be here until, I'll be here for 58 more seconds. Piera makes it in the paint. Pass off to Deja Daniel at the top of the key. Kula to Caldwell. Lopes looking for a shot here. As Daniel gets it in the paint, two points. 21 points now for Daniel, leading the charge here for the Lopes. Another impressive performance on her end, regardless of anything else. 30 seconds to go in this one. It's plagued. The Lopes all season long, unable to separate themselves from their opponents after taking big leads. They are just 15 seconds away from suffering their second loss to Kansas City this season. Shot clock is off. That's gonna be a shot clock violation there from the Roos. So the Lopes will regain possession with about 12 seconds left. Taylor Larson will enter this game with 12 seconds remaining. So Cephas inbounds it to Laura Piera. Lopes looking for a strong last possession before this one wraps up. 
Sierra finds Daniel again, and look at that. Deja Daniel ending her night, 23 points tonight for Deja Daniel. As that will do it here in Phoenix. So the Lopes fall to Kansas City in this one. Final score, 65 to 56. Second loss to Kansas City on their season. This will extend the Lopes losing streak, however, as they are still looking for their first win here in February, Phil. Well, there are some positives to take away. Obviously, Deja Daniel, the big one, 23.7 rebounds, another fantastic performance from the junior. Uh, she's gonna be a big piece of this offense going on for the rest of the season and next year. Laura Piera, seven rebounds, three points and five assists, played great. Had a lot of hustle rebounds for the Lopes, giving them opportunities. Kavito Kula finishes with nine, and Sharon Miller finishes with eight, and the Lopes did a pretty good job keeping Erica Mattingly quiet. She only had 11 points. So she didn't get her 19 average, but uh, well, we'll be back here on uh, on Saturday against Chicago State, and hopefully Lopes can bounce back. And the final score, 65 to 56, Kansas City over the Lopes. Thanks for tuning in here on GCTV, and again, catch the Lopes this Saturday as they take on Chicago State at 2 p.m. right here on GCTV. Follow Grand Canyon University on Twitter. Facebook and Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GCU. Alongside Philip Catalfamo, I am Jack O'Hara. Have a great Valentine's Day, and remember, go Lopes. <laughs>